Okay, so before we uh, get started writing any tests at all, we obviously need to install PHP unit. In this part, we're also going to look at setting up auto loading. We're going to create our tests directory. And then really importantly, we're going to pull over a PHP unit configuration file and we'll see how this all comes together. So I'm currently working within a completely empty directory. So we are starting truly from scratch here. And the first thing that I want to do, however you're running this, go ahead and require in php unit and this is just php unit slash php unit and we're just going to wait for this to finish okay so now that that's done let's just take a look at running php unit as it is at the moment so if we just come over to vendor and bin this will have our php unit executable file in here which we can very easily run from the command line now, if you wanted to, you could set up an alias for this. So you just maybe have to run PHP unit. Uh, in this case I have, but what you could also do is manually say vendor bin PHP unit. Depends on which operating system you're working with and it's entirely up to you. Now, the goal at the end of this part though is to actually just be able to run this with no additional options uh, in here. So we don't wanna have to run our options every single time. We want everything set up so we can just run this and it runs all of our application tests. Now, where are we gonna even place our tests? Well, this is important because we need to define this out when we configure PHP unit. And of course, I'm just gonna create a simple tests folder just within here. So that is pretty much uh, where all of our tests are going to go. So what I'm gonna do now is just quickly set up uh, auto loading. So hopefully you're familiar with auto loading. We're just gonna auto load everything from app just so uh, we can start writing out our code in here. Uh, so we're gonna auto load here using PSR4 auto loading as normal. And we're gonna call our app just app and we're gonna load from the app directory. And now that we've done this, we just come over and we're gonna run composer, dump auto load, and then maybe pass the optimized flag. So now that we have this done, uh, we need to think about our configuration. As you can see, when I run PHP unit just here, we have lots of configuration options, but as I've already mentioned, we really don't wanna have to uh, specify these every single time. Now, the basics of this is that when we do run PHP unit, we can specify the directories or files that we want to test. But again, we just wanna run everything from tests. You can individually run tests later if you want to, but generally uh, when you have a project, you want to run all of your tests because that's the point. You want to see if anything that you've changed has had a knock-on effect uh, of any of your other code. So what I'm gonna do is inside of the root directory here, I'm gonna create a phpunit.xml file. So we define this out. So it's just PHP's, uh, PHP unit's configuration file that it will always read from. Now I'm gonna pull this over because I'm not gonna write out all of the XML. It's a little bit of a waste of time, but I'm gonna talk you through uh, what this means. So obviously we just have a standard XML declaration. And these are just some of the options that we can pass through. And you can pass through as many here as you want to. But generally for very simple testing and just to get started, this is pretty much uh, all we really need. And of course, uh, what I always like to do is take a look at popular projects, maybe on GitHub and see which kind of PHP unit uh, configuration they're using. And of course, later on down the line, if you get stuck with anything and you need a particular option, you can just go ahead and define it in either here or when you run PHP unit on the command line. So the first one I have here is a really important one. This is our bootstrap file. So this at the moment I've set to vendor autoload, which is just our composer autoloader, but maybe you have some kind of app bootstrap file. So maybe this is uh, crucial to running before you run your tests. Maybe it uh, does something special that you need to happen. Either way, uh, you can go ahead and define in a file there that boots everything up before your tests run. Now the second one here is colors, pretty self-explanatory. This will just add colors to the command line. And I always have this set to true because it's a lot easier to see green and red just to see if your tests have passed or failed. Now verbose will just give you a little bit more output than normal. So I always keep this on just in case. And stop on failure will literally just stop if a particular test fails. So your tests will be run sequentially. If one fails, then uh, if you have this set to true, it will just stop the execution of your test suite. Now that brings us on to the actual test suite declaration. At the moment I have one, I've called it test suite. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but generally this is fine. And here I've defined out a directory that we're running our tests from. Now you can also define out specific files if you want here. But like I said, generally when you're running your tests, you want to run all of your application tests. So this is really all I ever 
really need. So now that we've done this, the difference now is that when we do go ahead and run PHP unit, this will actually take into account our configuration. It knows where we want to run our tests from. It knows all of our options. We have our test suite set up. And at the moment we see our verbose output just here. If we were to turn this to false, you can see that we get slightly less information. Again, this one really doesn't matter too much. And of course, if I change colors to false, we uh, instead of this mustard color, just see nothing. So I always like to have this on. And that for installing PHP unit and setting up our configuration is pretty much it. Later on down the line, like I said, if you have any specific needs, then you can go ahead and either add them here or you can define these out in the command line. But with that done, we don't have any tests, but we're all set up ready to run our first test, which we're going to look at in the next part.